Hey, it's Lisa O'Neill here. I want to talk to you today about learning and winning. So recently, my 13-year-old son, Felix, competed in a national taekwondo tournament. Due to the uh, pandemic conditions, there were really low numbers of competitors, so he was put into a sparring weight division that was well above his weight. Now, he was not happy. He wanted to withdraw from the bout. He gave me loads of excuses why he couldn't fight. Now, we'd travelled six hours for him to compete, so I wasn't happy. He's also spent years of hard work training to achieve his black belt. He told me the other guy was taller, the other guy had longer arms. I listened to all these excuses, and I understood. But I said to him, what's the worst thing that can happen? I lose, he said. What if you don't lose, I asked. Well, I doubt I'll win, he replied. I explained that he wasn't expected to win. No one would even be bothered if he didn't win. No one would even expect him to, looking at the size difference. I said to him, what if you learn? He looked at me blankly. Win or learn? They're your two options, I said. They're the only two things that can happen. He said, you might be right. He got in the ring. He didn't win, but he learned. He learned that his training had paid off. He learned that he could hold his own, and he walked away taller, stronger, and really pleased with himself. Not only did he face his fears, but he also realized that learning is a wonderful outcome. So I love the idea of winning or learning. If they are your only options, then failing doesn't actually exist. This is why I love the cluster strategy that we teach at Thought Leaders Business School. Win or learn. If your cluster is successful, then you have a commercial win. If it's not, you learn. That's how it works. You get to create a solution, something that someone needs. You offer it to a market that might value that, and then you get to decide on the best method to deliver it in. And off you go, like a little piggy to market. And some might work, and some might not. Now, there's many reasons why your cluster might not work. It might be commercially unsuccessful, but there's always learning. Reviewing unsuccessful clusters is a wonderful way to find the lesson in failure. Learn to fail fast. It's important. If it's not working, shift your focus and get something else up and running. Often in our pace to move on, though, we don't stop and review why the cluster failed, and then we miss the lesson. So, the reasons. I reckon there's four reasons why clusters fail. The first one is message. Was the message right? Is it an idea that someone values? Does it fit into a category that people will actually pay for? Is it easy to understand, or are you just simply being too clever? Do you have credibility in this area of expertise? If it's not the message, is it the market? Does this industry or this company actually care about the problem you're solving? Is it a first order problem for them right now? Is it a good time for them to be buying? Maybe you need to look at how how and when they buy, seasonally, calendarly, all the different types of timing that come into decision making when people are buying. And are you known in the market? Because maybe you need to work on your positioning. And what about the method? Was your method right? Is Is the amount of time required relevant to the size of the issue? What type of delivery is ideal for them? Do they prefer one on one or one to many? What time of day, what time of week or what time of year would be ideal for them? And how confident are you in the delivery mode that you have chosen? The fourth one to consider is the work. Did you do the work? Did you offer it to enough people? Did you create the necessary collaterals? Was it thorough? Was it relevant? Our clusters often don't work unless we do. So there is so much valuable learning for us when things are not commercially successful. So take the lesson. I love that Nelson Mandela once said, I never lose. I win or I learn. How good is that? See ya. 